interrupting this current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting episode BTWRLM 378. For all the, the all of you on the past cast broadcast, whatever we you read on, uh, want to get the, the content links. Put that into a search engine. Maybe behind the woodshed and maybe Real Liberty Media, and uh, everybody else will pop up except for the blogcaster. <laughs> That's the way it works. So, uh, been understanding we've been kind of blocked out for a long time. So this is what it takes. We have to really work hard to come back together to work stuff out. And I've been trying to show the dynamic as I've talked to you before. The sanctuary city's condition gave in Virginia gave us an, an idea. If we needed a permission and how and what to do, it was right right there in their Article 3. That only reflected the the power reserved in the people to change and alter and abolish when the government goes bad. That reflected the the Declaration of Independence. It's already been written down what we have the ability to do. And so I was kind of leading on with that as we were shown the way to go. And showing you that when they went into 2020, hindsight would tell us we needed to come together as a nation now to knock it down. But this was really in a different advantage. And it would really prove our mettle as people that because of where they went to the medical, supposed medical imperative, that also gave each one of you the power. And so we have the same dynamic, whether it was 95% of the counties agreeing with the Second Amendment cause, which didn't fulfill itself, or each one of you, relative to this so-called pandemic, this, this communicable disease fraud, each one of you could have been, can be, it's not yet over, it's getting closer and closer, but can be part of the however many percent, that, be, that forms the mass of people that then enables you to become the force that removes the government itself, displaces it for your reserve power as people, and then institutes what checks you needed to do that didn't happen. I've explained all of this, how this was supposed to happen. And so, I guess I should move on. People are not really tuning into that, and people are, some people are. I guess I'll get to that too in the comments here. Uh, Some people are doing their best, and we're doing our best with a hand, big handicaps, but we're still working anyway. And that's the thing that's interesting. We still have the power despite all the handicaps that have been thrown on us. And very few will actually step up. Very few will actually start to consider, maybe even, I don't mean just to consider it and then disregard it, but consider what I'm saying has been our failure for a long time that we can fix, we can move forward, and adjust as we start to move again. This thing about the peop- a free people, we always want to speak inside the control and never want to divorce ourselves from that control assumption and then tell in proper in a more proper way. And I say more proper because it's just an ignorance in people anymore that you have to cut through even that. You have to the battlefield includes this pervasive ignorance that is no excuse that you have to cut through and and you still have to prevail. And my suggestions behind the woodshed have been, well, just jump in somewhere, start to learn what this battlefield is, so that you're more prepared when we move into things that were has already overwhelmed us. This thing they call Corona, uh, COVID-19, symptoms without a cause. Fascinating to me. But uh, so I get back quickly here over to the comments and chats, and appreciate that you're doing that. I've really not suited myself to do live interaction in the chats. I've learned a long time ago uh, there's, it's just 60% waste of time in trying to figure out sometimes what people say and in the right context, and it's just better for me to move forward. And that's a little bit of one of the comment criticisms of me this week, and I found that interesting because that's great. We need, We can start doing this interaction. Even though I don't really do live so well, interaction, I can kind of do the follow-up and keep on going like I ask you to do if you have a question. You can send me an email at markonthebeast at protonmail.com. And I think 
well, I'll do what I can. I can uh, again, it's the putting putting you on the trailhead that looks like your cause, the thing that you need done. I can hopefully place you and show you why it's better. Your better place to start where I suggest in your cause, the thing that you've decided you need to do, or the thing that's come on you to do. I can deal with that a little bit better at real time. Now, all that that time that problem is the typing is quite a bit of a of a time consuming thing. So I may have to, with all the people that are really kind of responding now and in doing things, it's starting to take up quite a bit of time to respond. And I want to do a shout out before we get too far and I forget, and Daryl Merrill at Miller, thank you very much for the generous donation to RLM. I was just told by Grimner that you, he received that from you. I appreciate that. And Sound Minds, I appreciate that you've directed that to RLM. And again, all, folks, all you listeners, there's lots of people now working together that aren't taking, a, if any, compensation for what we're doing. Uh, and there's a there's a reality rubber meets the road in the hardware that that's what Grimner provides through RLM that gets us out that lets you pick up this and like Grammy Mary donating to the Spreaker each month a lot of you pick up the stuff off the Spreaker well, a handful of you and then you disseminate it out so it's all we're all working in a in an integrated type thing and there is some hardware uh, that needs to be paid for and again Daryl went a long way to help us do that. So we're going to continue as best as I can. I mean, I always go through this roller coaster. What do, what more do I say? We're not getting that much response. For all of you all that might be responding, we're just not get, we are not getting that response. And we need everyone, at least what consider, be considered the mass of people, educated on the point of what we're doing, moving in unison to resolve the wrongs against us. As you can read clearly, was a problem in the Declaration of Independence. I'm mentioning a little bit this about the Declaration of Independence, but I don't point out. I point out how it eventuates itself through our constitutions. But if we need to give be given permission, the people before us gave us that permission. There was things reserved even from government that we retained for ourselves, and the Virginia Constitution was very clear and a very easy place to go if we had no other point to go that even after the even after the Declaration of Independence it was still reflected in the constitutions. Whatever you might think about those constitutions, what they were and what they actually constituted uh, relative to what we thought they were, as I was telling you, I started to look very carefully. When I started to see what the mining law really was, that's a grant relationship. And that changes a lot of what we see as the harms and then imposes the obligations on those that were supposed to protect us in the capacity of government in a neutral way that fail the dereliction of duty in a trust breach. And so this is now on, the obligations now flip over to that. And once that happens, we now have it written, if we didn't know, we have the power as a mass of people. Again, I'll repeat it again, but why Virginia's sanctuary city fiasco, which I came on the broadcast to explain what it ought to have done, and that you had to have the power still, had the power and have the power to do correctly through the constitutional guidance of what the posterity reserved to itself when the entire government fails, but the people can alter and abolish as they see fit without the overview, without the reconstruction, without the interference with either political party or the bar association. And so I've said this over and over and over. And the coronavirus gave us another, with the imposition of this corona fraud, gave us each one of us the power where we have the standing. And so th this is a very, for me, this is a very critical view about how a people fail, even though they have all the power. And uh, so I'm going to move on here, move on uh, to address some of the comments. And uh, there was a question, Lady uh, DMS Free, how I send you my, uh, can I send you my habeas for review and blessings? Well, I won't give you blessings. What we do is really the hard work of educating ourselves of what's required. It's either a, it, the black and white of the statute, the way the occupier, and the occupier may not have done so bad in certain instances. In fact, the occupier had to accept what the posterity reserved to itself. So that's the savings clauses I keep telling you about that exist. It's not blessings that we'll get. We're going to verify whether or not we're complicit, compliant with the objective basis of how we move a remedy forward, a remedy that we likely as a people are absolutely ignorant of. So if you have a, a habeas, 
And when I say habeas, my mind thinks of three or four documents you have to have. Yes, you can send them on. And I can review them. And what I would ask you then, and not that I don't know if I, don't know if I have the time even to do all this, but if you'd send me the link to your state's habeas provisions, I would compare that to what you're writing. Because you'll have to compare that too. As I've instructed everybody who's, try, who's working this up. Is that basis? And I've explained my experience with that. And you, and you have to lay it out in order of what the statutes say. Otherwise, it gets disregarded pretty easily. The good judges, so-called, are not going to make up your mistakes. On the other hand, habeas flips all the burdens. And if you understand that, you get to look, you focus a little different in, the, in how you bring your thing forward, your condition forward. And at this point in the corruption, you're not just, ex, you're expecting that justice be done, but you understand the battlefield is it may not be. And you're looking for that evidence, too, because that's actionable. Again, you're the one that ultimately, each one of us is the ultimate decider on that. And if we come together in common, a united purpose, common purpose, not the common core, not the common, not the commons, but with the problem of a, of a derelict government, with one that's in maladministration and, re- and actually causing harm, each one of us has that cause in focus. And we don't start going off in, in all directions like they uh, like a herd of cats, like they, they get us to do. But so, Lady D M S Free, thank you for all the comments you do in the Sound Minds chat. Appreciate it. Yes, anybody, I've explained this to anybody. You have something for me to review, um, just send it in and I'll see what I can do. If I have experience, I'll let you know. If I don't, I'll let you know that. I don't have any, it's nothing, nothing for me to say I don't know. I just don't know and I don't know everything. I know some things. And in these things of today that we're dealing with, I, I think I have a bit of experience at least to, we can have a that dialogue we're supposed to have and we can work out, work it out pretty quickly what you need to do. Uh, okay, moving on here, also in the Sound Minds chat, whether or not, you know, again, I picked these up. Thank you, all, all the chats and all the places and all this. Uh, it was je- I don't remember now where I found these, but a uh, Jet 8884. Confirming uh, that the honeybees are acting like they have Alzheimer's and they're in trouble. Uh, last week, uh, my view that my re- investigation research over the last, this full year actually, is showing that the bees are in trouble. Beyond what you say, I think Jet 88 is also involved with the 5G and that the interference with all that. And so there's, there's a, we, I don't want to get too focused on that. You're either interested or you're not, but there's things in the world that are giving us signals. And it, I won't, I won't put a cause on any of it because there's a bigger cause out there that even climate change deniers deny, or climate change ad- adherents deny, and that's the sun. And uh, we could have some long term things going on that aren't special but they're just in the ebb and flow of nature there's something that life has to deal with uh, but uh, so thank you for that con- that confirmation it, to me that was just a point of information the, the honeybees and i have to guess where jet 80 is uh, just by from comments i don't really know anybody here necessarily that uh, where they are what you do but i uh, would to put to know that that's that region's having some trouble i suppose is Okay, just puts a piece of information in my mind. And uh, Jet 8088, uh, uh, she goes, uh, I think it's she, uh, is criticizing me a bit on coming into the broadcast and within a hundred a minute, 40 seconds, I'm chastising you all. And that's partly yes and partly no. And I have said before, I guess I'll clarify this again. Those of you that are working hard to do stuff and doing stuff, just let that go in one ear and out the other. I'm not criticizing the people that are actually working. What I do is I have no but nothing to view, but I look out over the, the week, and I'm listening for the high points of what is going on in proper response, and I don't hear any noise that way. I hear no sound about that. And so I'm responding when I come on to, maybe it's a bad, I've told you I'm not Tony Robbins, so I don't, I'm not necessarily the guy, the guy behind which has not a bunch of positivity coming out the gate. Because we have a problem, and it's a serious, serious, deadly problem that we're into. And so I don't come in like the comic. I wish I could. And I don't know of many people that I can actually promote who do the proper, that are doing the work that's successful to help others understand that. So I appreciate the criticism criticism, but I'm not talking to anybody that's actually worked, got their sleeves rolled up doing things. And now, 
I want to pass something else on here that she says. Um, and I assume, I apologize, maybe I shouldn't do the gender thing. I assume that Jet's a, a woman. But uh, I, I says, I was literally for five hours in a council meeting last night talking to council members about 5G and the COVID-19. I'm tired of being told you haven't done it. Please stop the lecturing and share, just share vital information. It saves time, energy, and well, it says curbs and more positive vibration, which we all need more of, please. And I can appreciate that, but for my position, without having any interaction, all I can do is come on and say, we have a problem, here it is, here's what someone, anyone can decide to pick on, pull on, pull up on, and in some regard, I think it's positive that I'm telling you that there's a remedy. So not to disregard that, but listen very carefully that you want me to be positive. But to me, the positivity is in knowing that people are being properly addressing the problems that they have. Now, the addition here that says it's to offer vital information, I'm pretty well stuck. I don't know really what to offer. I've told, told people this over and over for years. I can only go off the tabs of the harms that I see coming to people and say, here, here's how you may, adjust, you may pro approach this. This is what you might be able to do against your condition. Then you have the human factor, the so-called human factor and locally with your politicians, whether they're a statesman or not or all that. you got the, the dynamic there that has to be dealt with. And it's not easy. I can't say it's easy. But there's obstacles that have to be overcome. This is the problem about letting the republic get too far away. And so I can only address things, vital information, specific to specifics. Now, that said, if you have something that you're having a problem with, again, I've offered, send me an email about it, and we can work through. If you want more information, I need to know about what. I've been totally open to say, here, send me a problem, and we can. And you want to start having me broach it during a broadcast? Let's do it. If this broadcast can finally become a, a place to come together and start to become effective, let's do it. If this is not the place, let me know. So I'm encouraged by the comment here. I appreciate that I may not sound so p positive. I guess that's just a perspective as well. But please do not, none of, none of you, please do not think I'm criticizing anything that you're doing because I don't even know what it is. In fact, I don't even know what you're talking about you did. And let me touch on that because this brings up a link. Again, uh, for sound minds, I don't think you'll have this quick enough. I did send an email for it that... Uh, it was a question based in this problem that we have, even in addressing. I'm sitting for five hours. I can't even imagine why, as a people, we allow that our government to do that to us. And so here we are. It's happening. That's what they require of us. And they they don't care. And we aren't really making them care. And that's a little bit of a criticism I have against a criticism. Without understanding what the problem is, we can't. I can't offer the information to move us forward. I can just keep repeating what it takes to get engaged so that any one of you will start to see what needs to be done. At that point, I still don't know. But let me offer you a problem that did come up. And again, uh, Timothy 87455302 from Twitter had a question for me. And it was right on this point of interacting with your local government. And it was a question. So I want to I want to address this because this is where, had I known that this woman was going to make a presentation and I had seen what that presentation was in writing or what or discussed to me I could have offered a short paragraph addition which may have empowered her a lot better at least make that record I'm suggesting you need to make the absence of the extra bit of which she didn't know to do brings her into a place where the, she will be ignored and all of you might be and that's where the frustration starts to come and so what I'm saying is it doesn't relieve the ignoring of you. What it does, it starts to set the record of future remedy, which I don't think we appreciate as a people. You can't, you're can't. you not going to be so quickly disregarded when you have your all the so-called ducks in a row and put them in the black and white that no one can denounce, and you move along that narrow path. And then you attach duties and obligations to the derelictions of that becomes a lot more powerful. Once I think more people see that and understand these things, 
then there's not going to be a question in the greater mass of people looking on and then hopefully rolling up their sleeves to help. And that's another thing for those of you listeners. You see people that are doing these council things. Maybe you want to engage with them to say what, to work together to offer a better presentation. But I'm not saying a criticism of any presentation. You might be up against a stone wall, but you're going to have to wait, figure out a way to climb over it, climb around, find the ends of it, dig around it, dig under it, whatever, dig a hole in it. And that's what I try to offer with the obstacles that we've seen, and I've seen for decades, what we do here. So let me let me touch on something here. What Timothy offered is a question, which is, I thought, important to understand. He says, as a small start, if we all do this on paper, or is she going to be ignored and beat down? Sends a video link from another Twitter account of a woman standing in front, apparently, of a, in front of a, uh, a commission, council people, commissioners. Got the big blast screen of glass now for the COVID. But she's saying in this video, and you'll get this later, she's telling them that she's not going to comply. She's not going to put up their wrong, what they're doing, that they know that she's diminishing her, they're diminishing her rights. And then she wa- finishes her brilliant observation of a minute and 20 seconds. How they got you down to where you can only talk a minute and 20 seconds should be the insult as well. And then she gets it all out in a minute and 20 seconds and she leaves. And my answer to the question, is this a small start if we do this on paper? Was what she says is really more of a denial But if you go listen to this, you go listen very carefully. This is the subtleties of what I talk about that you have to resolve that may or may not be holding people up when they are doing something. That she would be ignored because she was actually just offering a a defying, not denying. The denial without a reason is defying and inadequate. Defying that she'll wear a mask is inadequate. A denial with the proper reason why she, they don't have the authority to present that to her or impose that upon her is what you actually want to say. So as invigorating, as positive as a message of someone de- defying authorita, it isn't what we really need to be doing. And so in this case, spending even a minute and 20 seconds may be inspiring to people listening on, but it's not effective against someone who doesn't care. And we know they don't care because you're standing there having discussing this stuff, arguing with people supposedly supposed to represent you in governments that you are the authority to shut down if they start, started doing nonsense to you. Let me go on here without interruption on what I said. Denial without reason is defying and inadequate. Her quote, you are intentionally diminishing our abilities, close quote, is not asserting the failure to certify an infectious agent and felonies committed under mere color of existence of an infectious agent in diminishing property and rights where there is no test. Had she added that and then challenged the certification that she should have already found in the statutes, and then the duty that the commissioners were bound to have relied upon instead of the CDC and instead of the WHO, she would have empowered her position not as defiance, but as a denial of application because they were being criminal in the first place. Because when they didn't do their duty, you then turn around and apply, what did I say, the property and the rights infringements, which are extortion in your penal statutes of every state and your coercion in the penal statutes of every state, black and white. Is where you're rock, walking up against a, in this case, a, a brick wall, and through futility for the most part, and maybe continuing. Again, go look at the continuous usurpations clause in the in the Declaration of Independence. It tells us this stuff. We have every power ahead of all this to do something about it. I'm telling you, the statutes are also reflecting that in yourselves. And when you empower, not in defiance, but in denial with the right reason then flipping the burden on them and the failure by dereliction of duty, you can attach it to their oath, to actually do what they were required under the law, now you start turning the dynamic on the record. And that's what my response to Timothy was. Don't deny, just don't defy, de- deny with a reason. Give the reason as I just said. 
Again, you go back and roll this tape back, you can take down the words I said. And it probably sound like a broken record for the last six months, what I've been saying. And you go to those places, that, that the little 15 second statement I do actually attaches to a whole lot of case, um, excuse me, statutory code, which you research and, and line out line by line by line, copy and paste the relevant points of their failure. You just state that. She could have added that 15-second statement onto that and then move that with a piece of paper later to the record and then move that into making the presentment for an injunction, actually. When they fail to respond, you can then use a cease and desist based on that prior notice. But just to say, I'm not going to wear your mask and you don't have a right, they don't care. They're going to have to start caring when you tie it up when they impose that without the 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 certified, what the law, the statute that they were required to follow said there was supposed to be a certification for an infectious agent. They don't have one. And locally, they were supposed to have their own test, not resolve, rely on some PCR thing. That's a clinical test. It doesn't mean it's a manufacturing process for study and re further research. When the local official didn't have their own test to identify it, and they didn't certify to one, they failed to do process required underneath the infectious agent requirement certification for identifying a communicable disease from which they're trying to dictate to your life. On top of the fact that that is does not take into consideration your private determination on what you need for you. But let's next step over. I don't even get there. So, get back to the question of what can I offer. If I'm t presented with a condition, like I did in this video, and I want you to go, everybody who's doing any presentation to the county, I want you to go listen to what this valiant woman did. I, I, there's nothing like I really agree, disagree with in what she said. It was, what was the eff efficacy against what she needed to do? If you can grasp what I'm saying on this, and if, if, Jet, 8884, 8884, if you're running into a wall and you're noticing in your presentation you haven't put the next four steps on, which is really they're connecting up what they were supposed to do in the law relative to what they were supposed to certify. And I'm talking COVID, not the 5G. That's a little bit, actually quite a bit different approach, but COVID-19 in position. And then you attach the fact that when they did, didn't did have that warrant, it's unwarranted, go to your extortion and coercion statutes, that when they came unwarranted to take your property and your rights without the proper process, that they committed the extortions. Not only did they take an oath to do otherwise, then they omitted to do the proper thing. That's a couple more felonies. Now you're starting to make a record, and you reduce that to writing. Again, the printed word. You reduce that to writing. Now you start establishing what I've been telling you needs to be on the record right now that I don't think anybody does. That you may be the first one that starts to make them question. You don't. This is not a flipping of the switch that you win. It starts to show the imposition because you're actually talking against the Bar Association member giving advice contrary to all this too. It starts to show the people that they're getting advice from are wrong and their position is unsupported. This is like a co- Law, remedy, and education at one time. If you're just going in and, de and defying, it, you're not going to be listened to. Now, so Timothy responds that what I've offered is a good point, and he observes they know they are diminishing her abilities and don't care that they are. Probably wouldn't when presented with the tinted law either, but at least she'd have made her official document record, as you say. So he acknowledges what I'm suggesting should have been there and the step more more, more proper. My response to him here is, yes, and as I pointed again last weekend, if they cared, she wouldn't be there. Why it takes raising the stakes, as I have suggested for years leading into this condition, and where she fell short. It's not a judgment on her. It's what I don't think she understood. I'm never talking in judgment that way. I'm saying we have a better thing that we need to be doing. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm trying to force people to see we're not we're falling short at almost every turn it seems. No matter how much we dig the hole, continue to dig the hole. In fact, the harder we work digging a hole, it's just we make a bigger hole. We were never supposed to be digging the hole. You you find, you identify they're digging the hole. So, 
to to jet thank you that you're out there you know putting the lashings to them you may be being successful i don't know about that you can let me know what information i might be able to offer i don't even know what to present for you i can do it in general but i can present it based on an anonymous type in position to you or to anybody that says hey how do i solve this uh, here's where i am I, short sentences works here's where where i am here's what i've done and and this is what i need to get around or here's what i've done this is what it did we've made some progress i would like to start to you know have thousands of people that i can't answer to because it's too much pick from a, a vast library of people saying this is what i'm doing and this is what's working and then i could start saying hey if anybody in this condition let's put it out there in a way i'm saying okay so why would i be more better why am i better positioned to be able to field that than anybody else in one way i'm not but in another way i do have a filter of experience that i can adjust and anybody who i i talk to sees that pretty quickly we we can adjust the condition pretty fast there's a misperception sometimes there's a mis discernment that needs to be corrected once you get it corrected or once it is corrected or even as a question it gets answered to be correct then it then the answer falls right into place so for me anybody who has a condition and I really can't read lots and lots and lots. That's my hesitation to even offer this. But if you can just explain what's going on in a short sentence that I can grasp what's going on, whether you have a suggestions or whether you have a need, I need to know what those are. Otherwise, the broadcast is sitting in a quandary between to have and to be. What am I going to talk to? And I don't. And here's the other problem. Unless you tell me, this is really a problem generally you're finding for other people too, and how would I speak to it? I won't really talk about too much that I'm helping people because that's like a private thing. And if I don't do it that way, my mind wants to start talking about lots of stuff because there's all these things that are going on, but they're not, I don't think that they should be made public, actually. And a lot of things in the works are trouble, are problematic. That becomes, for me, the loaded gun I would hand to someone that doesn't understand it's a problem that we're working on and thinks it's the answer. This requires, again, not a judgment of that we're not. We are. We're, we're, the, we're the intelligent people. We're the ones that had to keep the republic. But we're, we're fallen people. We aren't there yet. And we could be there. We're very, we could be very closely and very quickly there. But we're still having trouble against people that don't care. And we haven't identified that. And how to bring that a record into place that it's unassailable against the position that we take. In other words, it's not a quite, there's nothing we put in the point that you've seen over history that a, some psyop comes in to diminish you or attack you, calls you an anti this or an anti that. It, it, there's no, I haven't been able to see any way that they can do that when we stay on that narrow path. And this is, again, I got this through the understanding, finally reading enough about the mining law, understanding what it was. It's not just a law in minerals, gold and silver. There's a law about property and trusts and relationships and the foundational existence of this nation and where the power really resided and who the trustee was for that. And that trustee has been doing breaches left and right for over 150, 60 years, 70 years. I don't even know anymore. I forget. It doesn't matter. The history only confirms our problem today. Let's focus on the problems today. We'll solve for the problems that came on us before once we understand as a people. Once Virginia would have stepped up and done their constitutional power to alter and abolish the oppression that they now saw, see in Virginia relative to their right to keep and bear arms, not under the de definition of the government, but under the right of the people that they determined. When we didn't see that example, the nation did not get the example that was needed. One. Number two, we did not empower each one of ourselves to say, I was a part of even that. That's how we're going to move forward when COVID-19 fraud hit us. So, I, again, I'm not, I don't know what to say. This is kind of a long-distance discussion. I'm not criticizing, and I'm chastising, but I'm not really chastising. It's, I don't know what else to do to, if it, if it, if it ticks you off just a bit what I'm saying and irritates you, maybe you need to look at that. And that's, I guess, the best I can do. I'm not Tony Robbins. That's that's certain. That's, I knew that. I've known that a lot. I don't really. I'm, this is really not what I like to do either. I'm do, I've been doing something for ten years. I would rather not ever have done. 
I'm kind of like a guy off to myself. And then who am I? You start looking around. Who am I to even have a say? And yet, I'm in a society that the default to do, of doing nothing is the license of the oppressor to harm me. And I've seen enough harm, almost always at the, harm, at the hand of the government, or those, not the government, but those inside government, that I realize there's nothing, I've got nothing to live for in some regard. Because around the next moment, someone could have the authorita to believe they can take it from me, interfere with it, and I wouldn't have a remedy because the system is so set up and stacked against us. There's no example, hardly an example left to do to give us remedy. So I pre- I appreciate the criticism. We all have to do a lot more. We, however, we we come together to pull this off back and put this into play the way we need it. We have the power, so I don't know what the question is, but we have to do this together. That was the the double-edged sword I keep talking about. And so, thank you, Jet, for your criticism and your comment. I have no, one way or the other, we could always probably have a better, you know, better communication. We certainly can't do it as well long distance. I am not really, I don't have a judgment in me about this. I just know I'm looking at something that's not happening. And I really don't have the tools to get us over there. And so I do it my way. It may be a little bit harsh. Don't take it to yourself. However, don't, just because we're doing, digging a hole, if we, we don't, and we don't know it's a hole we're digging, that because you're digging a hole that it's something. I'm not saying you are. I'm saying anybody is. I'm saying you can do that real easy, easily, Vince. Easily, Vince, to ourselves. And I try to guide people away from helping us slide into that stinking abyss when we never had to get into the hole to begin with. We never had to get into the slippery slope. Virginia's Sanctuary County fiasco gave us that insight. The habeas corpus relative to quarantine and COVID gave us that uh, next remedy to each one of us. And the questions are, can you read my habeas? Yeah, but that means we weren't a people that know about it. And it was one of the fundamental remedies against government encroachment. We don't even know. We're so removed. Talk about getting the COVID and and, and 5G and all this other nonsense, vaccines, whatever you want to talk to. We can't even file the most foundational document to protect ourselves. We need to look at that. Now, if you think that's a criticism of any one of us, or I have, and that's a, no, you're not. Li- you're not listening to what I'm saying. We need to look at the fact that we're not exercising that, even as a to prove the point of futility, which gives us the grounds from which we'll move, a la Virginia. And so, yeah, I just look and thank you for the comments. I appreciate this. It gives me a point now to to discuss. I don't know if it's adequate here. I'm certain of all the conversations I've had over a long many years, when we finally get together, if we were to discuss this, we would work all these little things out. I don't have a problem with people working or, or I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about are we doing, becoming, are we the most effective we can be? And if we're not, maybe that's why we have more information we need. And I'm willing to my limit of knowledge to give that to people. I just don't know exactly what. So thank you for the direction I need more information specific thing, specific to certain things, and I can maybe provide it. And you know, I think you can hear the the scope of what I probably can provide is pretty vast. And part of that reason is because it actually run do all that noise out there about what they can throw at you is really again the path is narrow to the resolve. It's just whether or not you want to have uh, train yourself back up to something they trained you out of and have it. There's no muscle memory either into the, something in short term and keep pressing and then hopefully more people come with your example or find out that they need an example and they work with you or not. I mean, this, this is how this is work. I've been working without much of a lead for a long time. In fact, I don't even know that I have a lead. And so it's. I just look at myself. I don't think I'm an overachiever. I really don't like doing this. But when I'm being attacked, it, it doesn't seem like it. I put myself in a position. I don't take any hits. There's a way to set that up or that it's set up with you, while you go out to do, the, if you will, the greater good, the good that they the claim the government's doing, that you don't take hits, that you work through an almost impossible condition. 
and yet we work on it continuously. As much as we can. And the more I look at what the government does, I've told you this before, the government will impose upon you as many things in your face, right, that you have to deal with. And I, I think immediately about vaccines. Vaccines damage your family. You're going to focus on that. You have no time. You've been deca decapitated from your capitation. <laughs> your defense against decapitation. You're going to be impressed upon, and you have no, you've been taken out, is one of the methods of the war against you. So I understand all that as well. Some people just can't put the time in. And that's what makes it, I feel, even more important for someone like myself. What I've, I've been blessed, if you will, to be able to focus on some of this this stuff. Anyway, we're going to move over here. Thanks, Jet, for your observation. Again, I'm not arguing. I'm not, I'm not really chiding anybody. I want to get people to understand we've got to do better. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because I don't see reflection that we're doing anything. Notwithstanding, there's people that are doing something. To what eff efficacy? I don't know, but I can tell you over experience, you got to come with a pretty high A game in order to start to make some progress. And it's it's still going to be difficult. And part of that is because we don't have enough people that understand what the real A game is. That was the thing we were supposed to keep in the people. It's been totally destroyed. Moving over to UCY.TV. Oh, and I guess I should say, anybody, you know, you can find issue what I'm saying, fine, put it in the, the comments. I can go back and read them, preferably in the main comment thing, so I can see it. If YouTube will do it, give it to us, or wherever, wherever you're at. Uh, I get to finally find it, and I can see it, and I can comment to those things. I don't want to get in an argument on this stuff, though, either, because that's a waste of time. We just have to find the ground together that we're okay on. If you got a thing about what I'm saying against, I think you're, you think I'm judging what's going on or don't give credit or don't think about it, it's out there, that's not what I'm talking about. Let's get through that. Let's start working on the real problem. Those of you that have rolled your sleeve up, sleeves up, let's make you efficient and efficacious in what you're doing. That woman that I'm referring to, you'll get later on at the Twitter, taking the time to go down there to make that statement perfect. I always notice there's a 15-second, a 20-second paragraph that could have been stated to empower it. And I see people not doing that step. They, de they defy instead of deny with the lawful reason. I would like to see people shift into the next spot. Then when we have people doing that, then we'll look and see what more has to be done. And there's going to be, I can already know that there's going to be more, but at least we have the record being made. But the officials don't care. They're going to continue, and then how you start putting them in check and that they can be put in check, always with the threat that maybe the population will come big enough to do what, we, what I hope Virginia would do relative to their 13th uh, article, or for the, what they call the right to bear arms. Uh, you see why comment. Uh, Planet Mechanic. A brilliant synopsis. Now what? Paperwork is way crazy. Stay tuned. Staying tuned. Yeah, the, it is kind of crazy, but it's not. It, there is an order to it. Let's just say, let's get on the habeas. It's ordered in the law. You just got to go through it. It's kind of, it, it looks like a code, a secret code, but it's actually the process laid out that makes the if, it most efficient for the law to be fulfilled. The demands of the common law, which people give lip service to, I think they know. There was demands in common law that just couldn't be met by most of us today. And that, that writings of the how to do a habeas are really the compliance of what an old common law uh, writ was. And they had to be done that way, otherwise the courts would not recognize them. And so there is that. The problem with the statutory de definition is it may not fulfill or it may ascribe statuses to you when you fulfill it to the, to the letter of the law. It may ascribe a status to you that you don't, is not, you don't, you can't use. You still have to fulfill the necessity, but you don't do it in the exact way that they're explained. In other words, if they say the resident, you don't respond as a resident at all. And so I don't want to get too lost in that. So the most of you, for the habeas, the form is in the statute, if you will. It's in words. They didn't teach us about this stuff. So you, it's difficult to move on. And the paperwork is kind of crazy because that's just, a, that's just evidence of how uneducated we are in the things we were to know and keep. It's what we were not educated in when we should have been done by at least the eighth grade. And so, I'm again, I'm not judgmental about that. I'm saying we got to go. That's where we have to go. If we don't know, we're going to have to teach ourselves. 
And for each, for my view, if we, and this is how I learned it, so I'm only going to tell you what, how I learned it the best, with guidance from an, a lawyer who ends up realizing it's a big scam and he gets out. He was a good guy. Explains how I did it wrong initially in order for me to file it correctly. And it's only what I'm telling you. That's all I know. And so the paperwork is kind of crazy. That just tells you that paperwork, even though it's in the statute, is the paperwork that people used to know to do, that we're clueless to. And so when it looks crazy, it just shows you how far away from your law that you are and the posterity, mass educated posterity, which can alter or abolish the government when it took you down. And we never did. Okay, so yes, and thank you. Now what? Go to your statutes in your state, if it's the habeas you want to go do, and look at all those words and take a copy of it, read it over a couple times, and then sit down. I would, as I suggested to somebody else, start on the writ. The writ's pretty neutral. All it is is the command that the uh, the, uh, the command to the entity that the judge has power over to come and bring the body to the court so it can review the matter. It, it's nothing you feel. You just it's black and white. You just set it forward. You writ, print it out. That gets you in the process. You don't sign anything on that one. That's going to pre be presented as the package that becomes the habeas, which I think is four documents. You have a verification. You don't even understand what that is. It's just a document. It's your affidavit that supports the contention that's in the complaint, the petition for it. The writ is what the judge is going to agree when he signs or she signs. That's the third document that the that's going to be sent out by the clerk with the judge's signature to present you, the however they do that, with the, the, uh, the liberty that's unrestrained before the court. And so when you lay out this and you go research what the what the process was back when, before we got all lack of knowledge in the, in the education system, why wouldn't, why wouldn't the occupier want to diseducate you? Is diseducation a word? I guess I'll use it. If they diseducate you, then you can't do any of this stuff, right? No, that's no excuse. We still have to go out. So, yes, thank you for the, uh, for the encouragement to continue explaining this stuff. Again, it's just coming off the top of my mind as I see what needs to be done without direction. Uh, that there are things we can do We're s the cra the, that the paperwork is crazy. We, I can see two problems. One is it's unfamiliar, and then we also have the problem of application doing it and then seeing how that would respond. So we're totally out as a people. No matter what we think we can do right and how much work we're doing, when you find that there's an objective standard, an objective basis to proceed on, I suggest highly to follow that because we're so uneducated. We follow out of our emotion more than what was in law. We don't know what law is. And then it got convoluted by the attorneys in legal. And then it's a big occupation over us. And, way to the, and, the, and the simple answer was, we didn't need any of that as the people. The people decide what's proper. And there's nobody in between, as I showed you in Virginia, there's nobody in between when you do that to come and tell you. There's no Republican, there's no Democrat, there's no governor, there's no legislator, legislator, there's no judge, there's no attorney, there's no nobody that can come in between what the people decide for themselves. That was the marvelous thing given, if you will, given, I guess, as a notice that it was available that the, the Declaration of Independence is telling us that every constitution in the United States, the several states of the Union, told us. Have we exercised any of that? No. Have we exercised it when we had 95% compli complicity with the counties in Virginia? No. And we're not doing it in covid and then we attach, we try to attach all these other impositions that the that the the oppressor against us is trying to diminish us with. Uh, my thought is, if we can't really figure out if the paperwork, habeas paperwork is crazy, we need to go focus on. All of us need to focus on that. Why? Because it's going to give us back to the foundation of the law, and then we can turn back out to all these holes that have been dug for us to quicksand that we can step in and bring our emotion that, that that's ignored. Because why? Because there's they know that you don't know what you're doing. It's pretty. It's really pretty simple. They've got us figured out. I'm moving over to BitChute comment, and I hope um, this is not. I hope this is helpful. I don't usually do this much commenting, but I wanted to respond to you folks. We can do this. Hopefully, we'll move this into. If this is what helps people to hear, we move into specificity. Then I I can start maybe talking better on that and getting us moving step by step a little bit faster. 
but without a direction, I don't know. But I'm just going to comment to people as we go here. Uh, Tom Earth Shaman again responds on my last uh, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, so the government is a fiction and a sovereign. There's a question here. So the government is a fiction and a sovereign? And can I be forced into a contract that I was never aware of, nor have the specific terms explained to me? The law is a fiction? Why shouldn't it, I be disgusted with the whole thing? Bad laws make a mockery of good people. Lots of thoughts there. My first thought on this is, I feel as if this is an argument. I'm trying Myself, I'm trying to explain conditions. I've also noticed that we tend to bring on things and questions that may not be relevant or were supposed to be answered in a prior knowledge that we were supposed to keep, hold and bear and keep ourselves. The, the government absolutely is a fiction. But when you hear fiction, everyone wants to go, oh, it's a fiction, I don't have to deal with it. No, well, this is the, if you will, that agreement we agreed to to live in these certain, it's the what got formed up with our reservation to alter and abolish it, which means it's a creature, if you will. It's a legalism. It's a contract of agreement. But people put too much power into those words as something to divorce themselves from or to not have engaged. And this is where we start losing it. And this all I've watched this come on since the 90s, is misinterpretations. As I said, a government is a body politic. A body politic is, by definition, a corporation. That's all of you. You come in aggregate pieces coming together in one function. These aren't that nasty. And until we start understanding where we put these, how to, what they are, what they do, we're going to have a bunch of trouble. And my first thought about this is like this is an argument against what I'm saying, against me, against this. And I'm not taking personal. I'm just saying, yes, the government's a fiction. It's a given sovereign power because it's presumed to be speaking for the people who are the sovereign. The get out of free card, if I can say, is not so free. But get out of free card was the reservation to the posterity to alter and abolish, abolish that government when it became a despot tyrant, tyrant. And so we can lay a question down pretty quickly and just well, you know, have an idea in it. But there's a real dynamic, a, a, a real condition regarding all of this. And it all depends on the weight you put on some of these words and how you're going to treat it. I guess I could look at it in certain ways and just say you know, this is a negative thing. To me, it's just a, these words are really this question and the words that it responds to is, is explaining it's a tool. We may be the tools for taking on attitudes about it. Not, I'm not talking to, to Tom or Shaman. In, I'm not judging this. I'm saying this is how we have to enter into a discussion. We can't throw anything into negative and positive. These are supposed to be, these are worked to be neutral. When we start shoving them around and then denying or trying to be forced by them, we've just given up our, our sovereignty against the creature of it, against that fiction. Fictions are useful. And fictions can be used as weapons. And until we are able to identify and distinction, discern the difference, I think we're going to be running into some trouble. But in, getting to, So the government is a fiction and a sovereign, yeah. It's supposed to represent the people. When it doesn't, then the people were supposed to, were given, given the res, were reserved the power to cha alter it, notwithstanding the government. Question, I can be forced into a contract that I was never aware of, nor have the specific terms explained to me. Not forced, because they do it by consent. And when you don't know how to avoid, for your benefit, it's assumed upon you, presumed, excuse me, presumed upon you. If you don't understand this, dynamic, you're missing the point there, and then it's really, to me, it's not really more of a question than it is, yes, you can be so-called forced, but it's a presumption to your benefit. And because you let the presumption stand, and there's a way to avoid that or actually negate it, uh, then you it looks like you're being forced, but in fact, it was upon you to remove the presumption. Again, the the fiction is they're doing it for your benefit. When you start understanding the dynamic of this, it's really mind-boggling, but it really starts, once you get your mind set up this way, it's much easier to deal with. I mean, it's, again, as I tell you, you can avoid that. You can avoid that. You want to force you into what you think is a contract? Well, what is a driver's license application 
but the request to apply an agreement, which happens to be your statutes, and the obligation and duty to comply with those in a capacity called commerce. As I said, applications with the government are your contract. When you go to the traffic court, if you don't even have one of those, and they assume upon you the benefit of the protection of the law, and you don't throw it off to say, but I have a prior ingress and egress right, which you don't have a power to d interfere with, and to do so is that felony and that co convert, uh, coercion, and or conversion, if both exist in some states, and I think all states, if you knew how to say this, now you're starting to respond in the way that your question implies wouldn't allow them to do that. And so if you understand it is a contract and the application is put on you presuming your benefit, then you understand that it's not, and then you have to answer and how that's not supposed to be the fact. Now, we still have a problem, in which I may not be, uh, may not be total justice. The imposition itself against that right was a harm. That may have a different remedy, but the point is we may not ever remedy that, because what can the system underneath the new, what do you call the, uh, the FRN type stuff, as money, as law, as this. I don't think justice, actually justice is possible. They reduce it down to those fiat notes as, as, as a damage, don't they? And so we have a, I don't want to get too deep in that, but my view is if the government agents, are, when they have a, if you're a grantee or you're the posterity and you're within that power, just should leave you alone. That they don't, that they pres presume for your benefit the right to be able to shoot you and kill you on the street. Something's gone way wrong that we were supposed to check a long time ago. And so in that regard, too, yeah, an occupier can impose any contract they want on you. It's called the law of war. It's what I talk about all the time. And if you don't understand that point, yeah, you're going to take umbrage to all this nonsense, thinking that you have some power, and you're not understanding you're an occupied people. There is no need for contracts. It's whatever necessity of the occupier rules, and we haven't checked that either. And so we could have these questions but we there's there's answers there's answers pretty straight up and they're not that hard to understand and there's not an argument regarding it it's, it's a condition you end up finding out it's a condition and you either can avoid it or you're going to have to figure out that it has to be engaged the law is a fiction well there's certain laws that are not fictions i mean the law of gravity there's na nature's law if you will there's things that happen so the law is not necessarily fiction we can say these general questions but, but they're not valid. They're, they're, the questions themselves are a bit fallacious because we don't settle down and look at the focus of it. What what law are you talking about? The law of gravity is pretty, pretty much a truism to me. I don't know. I've never been able to fall off a cliff and fly. I wish I could. I can create a mechanism to counter the effects of gravity, but pretty much I have to, uh, I have to confine myself to agree to the law of gravity, even as a theory. And so there's, there's those kinds of laws. There's agreements that we give among men and women to live together. We're not so nice. That's why that started. There's a Then we get together and we get these same people that are diminished in capacity and they end up getting into government, the caucusocracy, a continuing caucusocracy we live under, and we don't throw them out, and so we live underneath that oppression too. We agree to that. That's why you see the courts. If you don't like it here, leave. That's, why the, that's what the sound, the sound from the BLM is. You don't like it here, leave. Even from the conservatives, you don't like it here, leave, go to Africa, go wherever. Yeah, it's a, it's a contortion of what's going on. Everyone's subject to that. That's a law. That's a law. And so we, we, can, we can say the law is a fiction or we can understand that some law might be. It's legal. Or some things are agreements and contracts that we agree to because, because, why? Because we've come to here and we're not so good amongst ourselves and we've found the so far the best balance for all that. And that's what you end up getting into. You start to see the law is about balance. The problem is who's who's actually got their finger on one side of that balance while the judiciary has a blindfold over it. But moving on here to this, why shouldn't I be disgusted with the whole thing? Well, the whole thing, again, the generalities I found to be problematic for me to answer at all. I don't even think I could answer this. We're all each disgusted by whatever. I don't know about the whole thing. I said I don't find the whole thing to be problematic. So I need specificity to start responding. And then I really don't get into philosophy. You may be disgusted, you may not be. I may be disgusted about something and you may not be. And I'm not just talking to any of you. It, it, what are, what's the specific condition that we're trying to resolve? Why waste our time anymore 
in things that are just philosophical. There's something on us that's not good. Are we going to turn to that and stop it? Or are we going to continue to make these arguments, which I think if we, if we did have enough time more than having to defend ourselves from the, the inside attack, then uh, we could go through all this. But that, that you just learn how we got here as fallen people. Why we even are here. Why did the Indo- De- Declaration of Independence leave the out clause for the people? And yet inside the out clause was a, was a defect. It required the mass of people. It didn't say how many, though, either. So we have uh, we still have uh, have things to learn about ourselves when the manipulators and exploiters get to to work it, and the bad laws make mockery of good people. Wow, I don't know if the bad there's a bad law uh, to some regard. We're really talking about the what is it? It'd be the mis like legal, and, and so. Again, if you lump everything into all laws are bad or fiction, you're missing, I think, you're, we're, we are missing a point. We are missing the balancing of our own reality, and we lose sight of how to make a discerning, we, we lose the ability, the foundation to be able to critically think. And so I'm not, I mean, I sense, I, under, I think I sense, I, I see this, and, the, and you, certain things they should bring disgust. Okay, so now, once those things are discussed, do you understand it sufficiently to do something about it, I guess is the main point here, and not to point my finger at anyone. Are we doing that? I'll say we. Are we doing that thing? That's why I say find the wrong, in your perception, find that wrong you need to make right. If, if one of these things is specific, the law is a fiction and that's a problem, then that should be your cause. Either not make it a, pro, a, a fiction or... Well, what? See, I don't even know where you'd go from there. I think it's easier just to discern what is law and not fiction and what might be fiction. And then, then look and see, is that no different than a wrench or a screwdriver that men and women have used so that we stop beating on ourselves and give ourselves an answer out to problems that we create for ourselves because we're just not so nice. And then when you're in an occupation, you have another layer. You have a foreign people in your, inside your ranks that have taken you over. You're not even talking about your own people now. And this is where the, the problem becomes. We'll get divided at that level. And we will be, we'll, we, by that, by that very thought and ob- observation and function, we will become dysfunctional. And that's what that layer uh, counts on. And so this is, again, I can, for myself, I look, when I say that, my mind goes back through all the administrative things, the, the, the memes that go through the, the synthesis, antithesis, and whatever and thesis and all that. Yeah, yeah, you can. There's a there's mechanisms out there that pull that off, but it's not even that. There's something deeper going on. We either understand all that deeper stuff as a foundation of understanding, and we start to respond, act with that awareness, or else we're just going to have these questions that are generalities that will never get us to where we want to go. So I've I've just tried to really synthesize this down. That's why I've kind of got, all these years I've been listening to myself talk, really, it's just about finding a wrong. If something bothers you that much that you're disgusted, is it enough to do something about? That's where you focus. Not me, you. For me, it might be something else. For me, it was being, it started where five cops decided on a made-up traffic ticket that they decided they can draw down on me and threaten my life. That's where I come from. I come from surviving what you saw. You've seen lots of people not survive when this occupation became more obviously the military the occupation that it is. And so we can respond to the effects or we can go seek the cause. And anyway, so thank you, Tom. Observations, questions, looking at something for me to respond to, I'm attempting to show that we have a different insight to bring. And that insight that I perceive that I've been adjusting myself to is giving me a better approach to analyze these things and to move into the things that I, I find for myself are most important. Just to, okay, to place me relative to a listenership the subject matter areas I ended up engaging informed me to, 
to the point that I think I can be here with, if you will, some, some authority to tell you that. And that's, if I don't have that, well, then I need to get off and let someone else step in. But to date, uh, looking out at what we're looking back to the future, if you will, like that Virginia, being able to identify the, the things I've said about that. And I don't know, folks. Maybe someone's out there. I don't know of anyone. And no one's ever sent me a link that's, that had anyone in the world talking about that condition to use it as an, as an example for the people of the United States of America to move through to protect themselves, even with COVID. I don't think anybody took that analysis at all. And I use not that as a trophy. I use that to say, if I have no other evidence, I have an insight. Whether people will listen to it, follow it, actually engage it, actually apply it, I don't know. But it's an insight until shown different to be valid at this time. And maybe why I'm here. And that, and I think I saw a comment. With it, <laughs> that, we may get out of this by the skin of our teeth. Yes, that's. The, I only have that hope anymore. Hope, hope and change. Are we going to get back to the future and install, reinstall the power that the people reserve to themselves, notwithstanding the limitation of the masses? Are we going to come together as a mass of educated people? On point. Don't don't argue about law being fiction. Don't argue that the government's a fiction or whether it's sovereign. Find out who the who people who the people were that got involved and and cause the maladministration of that. Why did I use that word? Just because if I reference the Article 3 of, of Virginia Constitution, that's the thing that it focuses. The mass of the people should be able to uh, have the power to alter and abolish the government when that happens. That's the only reason why I use that word maladministration. You can use all kinds of other words, but it's there written in black and white so you can see it. And I try only to resolve things to offer that you can reduce to black and white objective basis that sits there, that when you research the train of authority back through the, the links of the chain of power and authority, why, you'll find that they're, they have foundation. They're not building your house on sand. You're not running down the beach in a, in a sand pile, putting a lot of energy going really nowhere. And we needed, I saw we needed that when I saw what happened in the 90s in the so-called patriot movement. And all the way came up here in the in the, a couple emails, the controlled opposition. It's just it almost it comes in right before when you're going to be excited about something, and it's already sitting there prepared. I watched this so many times as well, and everybody thinks it's important, and then, and they'll say enough truth to make you feel that it's comfort, it's what you should do, and yet they're not really steering you right. And I'll tell you what, it's been a hard thing to be able to identify for myself over the years, but I'm pretty certain about when I see something. I I just use the I don't even question anymore. If I see the cues and clues of dysfunction or misdirection, or if certainly if there's a lack of re res a lack of discussion of remedy when I know there is one, or a remedy that isn't fulfilled correctly, I, I just completely put that in a I put that in the, its own cage, and I don't touch it. I push it away, and I and I'm that's done. I'm done with it. I don't even go back too much to it. I won't revisit that. That's a that's poison. And a lot of people don't don't see have that in them yet. And this is why I say we're a dysfunctional people because we're an ignorant people. We're ignorant as evidenced by the look of what a habeas corpus does, the foundational document of our private liberty, private freedom card to challenge and flip the burden on the oppressor that's that's caging you. We don't even know how to do that. No, we don't, and then therefore we don't have a, an ability, notwithstanding it, it's in the remedy to do it for somebody else. And when we're in a society that sees that, we should be able to sit back and say, wow, we're really kind of in a bad way here. I better, I have some work to do. And for me, looking at COVID and then realizing that the answer, and I told you all the court cases explaining it, they didn't say use habeas. I showed you all the reasons why habeas was the answer. I said, that's good for me to tell you to go focus on that. Because if I can get people to go through the, even if it's not something you put forward, to see what it takes to understand what common law is and how to use it to, to at least get ready to prepare, to present a petition under your right to redress the grievance against you underneath another right reserved to you by the habeas, 
and maybe we get people back into a foundational knowledge of what the law provided. And if we get enough of those people together, then we're going to get somewhere. But until we do, uh, again, the skin of our teeth was a good uh, uh, characterization on that one chatter in one of the rooms that I just remember seeing. So uh, I guess I'll, that's all the chats today, uh, the comments today. I hope it's instructive. I'll move over here now. Again, give me a specificity. I can address it. you got something to look at it. I'll do what I can, and we'll move from fear. I don't know what else to do. I talk in generalities. I go to the tabs. The news to me is the notice. And Any one of you may find, uh, to me, uh, I don't know who's going to be interested. So I use it just to say we could, here's a situation. This is how I think it's laying out. This is what looks like it needs to come to bear on it if you're interested in all these things. It's a target. I keep saying it's a target-rich environment. What is your tar target? Have you decided to become the sniper to take that target out? Now I want you to understand, if you have, you just don't walk out your front door and call yourself a sniper. There's some preparation. And most likely you're not preparing on your own. You're going to be working with other people eventually, even if it's just in a, a scant email here or there to keep uh, focused on what's going on and What's the next thing that you got it, you know, bounce it. It's always nice to have a, a someone to bounce information off of. So, let's uh, appreciate the comments this week. We need to up our game. We need to get more knowledgeable. We need to then apply that knowledge. See, the knowledge is knowledge of the habeas, the writing of it, not going to give you the experience of doing it and finding out what kind of a, of a violence that's, happening to that law, fiction or not, in the system that's going to be receiving it. That's another proof. And so the proofs are here for us to make and not as an opinion. That we Here's the, the danger that's happened since the 90s. We declare what ought to be, and then I noticed that really wasn't the truth either. And then I understood later that could be controlled opposition. And so we have a minefield, if you will, and I've learned how to, for the most part, for me, learned I don't want to enter the minefield. I just as soon skirt the minefield. Identify it, skirt it, go around. N not on the skirt tail, no. You're, you're taking command of the condition to get to your objective. Your objective is the wrong you need to make right, and the way you take that wrong out is surgical. And the only war scenario that I know relative to exactness is a, that example of a sniper. And you don't grow, you don't, you aren't born being a sniper, and you're not born into the battlefield being a sniper to take out that one oppressor. And yet we have millions of oppressors, and I don't mean people, I mean subject matters that are used to oppress you. So moving over to now, uh, when we see that. People start to see this. I just wanted to point out some things as we've been going along. Again, uh, to me, it's just more people see it. They don't do nothing about it, but that's okay. That's more information for me to point out to you. You can now take the information, put the information in your back pocket, and it confirms the condition you're up against, and it informs you on how you're going to proceed and what to look out for as so you're not blindsided and you keep focused on your objective. That... Uh, who was this that writes this out? Charles? Are you, Smith? Uh, the American economy, in four words, neo-feudal extortion, decline, collapse. If we didn't keep the republic, we'd collapse. If we didn't stand united, we'd collapse. We're going to decline when we don't do all that and the oppressor's harming us. Then we get to the first part, neo-feudal extortion. Okay, I wasn't so insightful back in 1999. I said we are moving into the current Middle Ages. I think that's close enough. But in 1999, the evidence was clear. We were moving into the current Middle Ages. Neo-feudalism, the new feudalism. That's not the republic that we should have kept. So there's now acknowledging in 2020, 20 years later, we're in uh, what an economist says is a neo-feudal extortion. Well, at the same time and before the neo, the 
current Middle Ages observation I had, I'd already identified what, as far as the extortion. Not your state statute for it, not the coercion, but the extortion that's written right into the civil rights law called equal rights. I'd already known by before then, before the observation, we were coming into a time of current Middle Ages because the people were ignorant and we were going to be too, too, uh, we, we believed in the word more than actual deed. And I think I actually saw an article written this week about that. We were more involved and in, in, enamored with the word than the deed. And so we would have a lot of Second Amendment discussion, but it wouldn't know what to do. It was drunk on its own thought that it was good enough just to have it printed and we had the right. No one would understand what it, when, to, when it was supposed to be executed, nor would they know what to take out in the proper way. That it, all that was going to go out the window. We, we would be engaging a new, a current Middle Ages. I wrote this in 99. I'd identified what the, already before I got to there saying equal rights was what? what? Your right to pay exactions of every kind. That was where the Title 42, 1981 happened for me years before 1999. I real, that's when the mind flip happened and I said, wow, this thing's all inverted. This entire uh, illusion is an inversion of what's supposed to happen. And it's not even actually an inversion. That's improper too, but good enough here for if you've never heard this before, it's, it gets too wild, actually, to try and give you an orientation. Remember, and I talked on it last week, that white slaves were involved as well. And then when Lincoln indentured the entire, put the entire war on the country, it indentured everyone. And the freedmen, which were black at the time, were invested for their benefit now. You heard me say that earlier. With equal rights to whom? The white citizen. You see it written. And the rights were what? You see it written. You don't have to guess. You don't have to have an op opinion on it. You don't, can't have an opinion on it. It's written. And it's the oppressors telling you what they're going to say, how you're going to live. That it's these, a statement of equal rights is to the full and equal benefit of all laws and proceedings for the security of persons and property as enjoyed by white citizens and shall be subject to like punishment, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind, and to no other. And so back in 99, I'm looking at this extortion, aren't I? Exactions here. What's the key word here? Exactions. What does that mean? It only has one meaning. Extortion. It's wrongful extortion is what exactions mean. It's not just extortion. It's wrongful extortion. Apparently, Extortion can be done rightfully, I suppose. At any rate, so this is the big mind flip that goes on. What do we just read in the title? American economy in four words, neo-feudal extortion. So in 2020, Charles U. Smith finally sees exactly what I wrote back in 1999, not to diminish what he's saying. The point is it's in the black and white to see what you live under. Now, how that, when you saw that, it was your duty and obligation to throw it off. Let me read a little bit here so it's not maybe out of context. Our society, he said, he writes, as a legal structure of self-rule and ownership of capital, but in reality it's a neo-feudal oligarchy. So in my view, you can call it whatever you want. It's the middle, current Middle Ages playing out as extortion, just like he says. And we were responsible, people, we were responsible to keep the republic. No other thing. And we failed. It's why he can write about this. But it was written. It's failed since when? That law that I wrote you, that told you, 42 U.S.C. 1981, is back in, what, 1868, they told us. And so I won't read more. I mean, it just, I could read. We could go through all the words. I could do like I do all this other stuff. I have the link. You can see what someone else is saying. It is. De it was defined to us long before, and we're still crickets to it. And there's no excuse, and they're doing it to our benefit. I just, I don't know if people can really appreciate this problem. That contract you're disgusted with is this contract that's done to your benefit. And when they're presumed to be doing something to your benefit, you don't have a complaint. Until you expose it's not to your benefit, and then it becomes the extortion. I don't know what they, if it's wrongful extortion, it shows what, the wrongful, wrongful extortion? It is a crime no matter what, and then not just by commission, but omission, as I've explained to you. 
over and over for years and years and years. And so here we have the neo-feudal extortion is your lack of uh, capacity to get the property and your imposition of these fees, fines, taxes, license, exactions, extortions of every kind. Absolutely. And if you didn't hear it from me, you're just now hearing it from Charles U. Smith, who I think wants to talk to you in a dialogue about today and COVID and pandemics and all that other stuff. Not necessarily invalid, but we can know all that. My question continually is what you're going to do about it. Now that you know this, now that even the bean counter economists see it, which is actually the bean counter economists today imposing the neo feudal system where you don't have property rights, why you don't have due process that you've never insisted on, which the habeas would have done, or will do, not would have, will at this point, that you are living in this current Middle Ages where you don't have property, you know that, you sense it, you complain about it, and it's all an extortion which you don't avoid or you don't say it's not for your benefit in the proper way. No, you go in and say, I def defy to wear your, 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 your exaction of every kind in the form of a mask. Instead of saying, you didn't have the right to impose it, and here's where you failed in the objective basis. Not my opinion. Also in the news, we talk about whether you have the Second Amendment right, this and that, and people be drunk on the idea and the power that, that think, they think that gives them. And I told you before, and I cautioned people, and I want you to do this through this story right here, this notice in the news, that you need to know your use of force statutes and your right to bear arms is not absolute. In fact, it can be, it, you, as soon as you use that, it'll be challenged. And you're going to have to have the right statement, notwithstanding the right, because we've allowed the occupier to come in and, and to dictate to us, notwithstanding what appears to be an invasion of the reason why you even have the right to bear arms, protect yourself, uh, in this BLM invasion of a, of a property where the husband and wife came out and defended their property against a horde, a horde mob, a peaceful protesters broke, entered and broke the outer gate, didn't break the close, but broke the gate coming into the close. If you understand that, you'll understand how they've divided this property up again to incre increment. Uh, their encroachment, and they defended their property with the use of arms. McCloskey served with search warrant. Police take the rifle shown in viral pictures. So after it was shown that they were defending themselves up against a mob, and he tactfully got an air airing on, I think I saw a video in the Tucker program or whatever it is, I got a video came through, explained his mental capacity at the time he needed it and why he needed it, which is a def public defense that he's going to have to now say when they come after him. Right after he did that, they came to take his rifle. Not that him, well, they couldn't find the pistol. That's where they're talking about the rifle. That's interesting as well. And I think these people are, are attorneys who helped the people that came to invade them otherwise. They defended themselves and their property. Now they're going to be held to scrutiny. And a search warrant, a judge signed a search warrant to take the very weapon. And I don't understand that there's any charges here to take that weapon either. That where is your right to bear arms when this starts to happen? And where is the outcry and actual proper action when that judge signed the warrant that came from an attorney, a prosecuting attorney, and I don't remember now if this is the local prosecutor or the state's uh uh, Vic, what do you call him, Snowflake attorney, again, the Bar Association, who agrees as an NGO to the UN having a knot tied in the barrel of a pistol, that they judge signed an order to come by SWAT team, Nola. Didn't ask the guy. No consideration of answer, knocking on the door and asking for it. Not a phone call. If they have the right, and this is why they did it, because they likely don't have that right, they come by SWAT team, military, to come and take your arms. Do you have a right to bear arms? And as I wrote back in 99, vociferous drunken outcry about right to bear arms, you're too drunk on the power of those words to do the deeds it would take to keep the right, and that would become ineffectual to you in the future. It's shown partly right here. You use the weapon to defend yourself, excuse me, you use the arm, to defend yourself, and the government comes and takes it. It's not a right to bear arms. And when the government comes to do that, to, de 
to case by case do this without charges, the population should be in an uproar and altered or abolished the authority that allowed that in the first instance. Instead, we're going to hear the attorneys take care of it. The same bar association who has wrote in their house delegation rules, we've, I've read it, that they promote sustainable development and the things international. Why? Because they're an international foreign occupier on your soil and you've let them stay here. So, those people that you saw defending their home apparently are subject to and don't have the right to bear arms. And the uh, rifle that was taken, and I found this interesting, they called it a rifle, not the AR-15 assault weapon. That was an interesting twist here. But they took the rifle, which it is, just the right, it's an arm, not even really an arm, a rifle under, uh, unless it's under federal constraint, but and this is the other problem. The arm they had is now not in his possession to defend his family. Does he have the right? That should, should, the population should have already risen up and closed that door, period. Alter or abolish the government for the maladministration of the rights reserved to the people. Shouldn't even be a thought. Talk about hornet's nest response. This should have been part of it right here. What they've done, and I've talked to you about this in our miner who got attacked uh, in, in, on his mine. The assailant so close he grabbed the shotgun and pulled on it, and the guy's finger was on the trigger, pulling the trigger, shot his own arm off the assailant, and the miner went to jail because apparently he doesn't have the right to bear arms, and it must become under the scrutiny of this proper use of the firearm which can be taken away from him as a presumption. To whomever's benefit, I don't know. It certainly wasn't that minor's. Is something you have to determine in your mind how you're going to address. They've taken the man's weapon, the arm that he protected his home from, and now, and I didn't hear that they guaranteed any kind of security, and I now question whether or not you're seeing and witnessing the right to bear arms or not. And if you're not, maybe the posterity needs to get a lot more active here, as I've been pointing out. And so we have uh, things that happen to us, the witness of the, of the condition of which we each have to make a determination. The evidence that we won't respond of which is the fact that I didn't even hurt anybody, anybody across the country where you can and where you needed to file a writ of habeas corpus for your own defense, let alone someone else's in the same problem, that you allow the next step to roll out. It says now you're going to be ridiculed by your own people. Now they're dividing the population, so you can't be the majority if you watch how this dynamic is. They take away by whatever suggestions the ability of the, of the people to co cohere to be able to respond. That you also witness that this gun now is this arm is now not in the possession of the man who used it to defend himself. He's now defenseless relative to that. And I don't hear a cry one about the posterity saying that's too far. And so until it's too far, we're going to still continue and to watch that you live in a land where the king determines what your rights are, the feudal system. And it's an extortion because you have a property, the gun they stole, where there was a reserve right, and the right to use it now is coercion, felonies. And done so under military assault. And I all just don't know what to say now, just take you back over to the Libra Code, the first article, you knows them when you sees them. No, it doesn't say that, so don't hold me to it. It says they don't have to tell you they're, you're, that they're an occupying force and a military. You knows them when by their act, by their deeds. So talking doesn't mean nothing. Their deeds is what you're into. So when your deeds are not sufficient or not proper, they recognize that. That's international law. So I just found this fascinating here. I'm watching a, a population, a society that has all these rights that essentially gives lip service to it, having the obligation and duty to protect it. And then they wonder why things are going down the tubes. And then when I get behind a woodshed, and this is not on the subject matter of guns, but I'll move over to the next point. When I made suggestions on when you had a balance, a literal balancing of rights between certain equal authorities, 
and a necessity driving that, that you have to follow the black and white process in order to make it function. When you have that process and don't avail yourself of it, and then you complain, or you complain against me, then I start again. It gives me more evidence that we're not a society that knows how to think, is not prepared to think, has no education at all on what to do about thinking, let alone putting it all in action. And I'm bringing up now here, when I, a long time ago I brought up that the, but regarding the Dakota Access Pipeline, I said that there, the Indians are being used, the, the Indian Reservation, the Indians there are being used as a stocking horse for environmental concerns, and that the cause was not really for them to do when it was given over to the attorneys again, and that what they had to do was make a record of their established rights, and I went right to property law with that. No opinions, no feelings, no nothing, because in this regard, if we don't follow the objective basis laid out, then we can e I'm going to say it again, easily. It's not his name anyway, but I'll give him credit, Vinny, Vince. He easily move from protecting ourselves to letting that failed constraint be used as a bludgeon against us everywhere. That I said at the time, and I was vilified, got people angry at me. They don't listen. They stop listening, didn't want to have anything to do with me. I said, you need to stop the environmental justice stuff. You need to focus on your rights relative to your land rights and where they are. Don't make claims outside. They're going to be found out. Put them in the process and, I, and press hard that that's, that balance gets done. That that balance under the objective basis of the law to balance between our literal competing, our real competing interests is done correctly. In that time, I had even Vince come on and he explained being someone who laid that oil pipe or in the business of it, he explained that those pipes could be laid wrong. And I said, well, okay, if you can't stop the laying of the pipe, then what you have to do is you have to make a guard, a, make a protection, require a bond, and require and allow and require independent inspection of placement, which causes the the oil pipeline failure. Now, for me saying that, I had people who should be listening didn't listen. They'd rather have their arms blown off and go fight with the cops and all this other stuff. They ended up losing, I think, particularly in one or two cases. And then out comes this news. But I want to focus us on something. And it has nothing to do with the water and all that stuff, although inside the process it does. That when they returned back to doing the fundamentals, whether I agree with their right to do what they did on how they did it or not, and whether or not it would be efficacious is not what I'm talking about. That they then returned and did really what I had said they need to do and force the agency to do what's required under, in this case, the NEPA, National Environmental, Environmental Protection Act relative to major federal actions. they We get this discussion, this news, Dakota Access Oil Line to be shut by court in bloat for Trump. Well, this is all politics, too. It's not a blow for Trump. What this, Though the, the, the decision was made to go ahead and ex, um, expedite the process, they still had requirements to do under NEPA. In that regard, I guess you could kind of thump Trump a bit, but really... We're looking at an agency that is the judge decides didn't fulfill a I think three points in the process. The very same thing I said that the Indian tribes needed or any property or see the Indian tribes here and it's admitted now are merely a property interest adjacent to this project and their property rights are no more or less than what they have or different or any more or less than anybody else has in protecting themselves. They actually admit now that I told everybody then this wasn't on their property at all, and this was on a treaty ground of hunting, which is really not based on the standard of imp pipeline placement. They didn't challenge. They're going. That's not going to even be part of the process. That's going to be water under the bridge where they didn't challenge it, as Vince had told us could be a problem. Not that it was, but it could be. And there, once you know that, then you have to demand the protection for that. This is more of the more proper approach to a condition is that I've been trying to advocate. I have been advocating whether people want to hear it or not. I don't know. 
But the Dakota Access line was is to be shut on August 5th. They're going to shut it down. They're going to shut down. It's a it's a pipeline that's moving material pr pr product produce through the pipeline. They're going to shut it down for three failures of NEPA that the agency didn't do that the plaintiffs asserted needed to be done, and the court agreed. The court agreed. You need to read. I got. I think I have the, uh, I got, I think, a link. Yeah, it has the decision in it. You really need to read the decision. It's not that long a decision. Go through what the court does. Go through how the court analyzes the agency's failure to move from an EA, an environmental assessment, to an environmental impact statement that it appeared that they needed to do that they didn't. This is not about really shutting down that pipeline more than a court who had ordered the agency to fulfill the EIS. The agency had not, and the the the, uh, the plaintiffs just said that they that needs to happen before this can move forward. And the the answer from the defendant and the United States agency was not sufficient. It was really lame. I'll just tell you that. Now, I don't know if that was done on purpose by the agency, but the oil industry didn't bring what they, my view, what they should have offered, the standard that they had already complied with, and the failure of the agents of the other side to show that there was any harm, would have been a better argument than not bring, bringing the one that they failed on using cases before. But anyway, so this comes through. I want you to understand what I've been talking about. There's a standard of order that due process that is in objective basis that you go by. However you, in the current problem, however you conceive of the government, it's moving forward. And if you're not at that table, when your rights are about to be taken, and there's a due process that can be done, you're presumed to have not had a say. The standard of sufficiency and adequacy of which is the black and white, This in this case it's the NEPA, and a decision that the agency made to go from an uh, environmental assessment where they could say there was nothing they had to do in order or to an impact statement, which is, takes it's going to take 13 months. The failure of which and the lack of information from which the, the plaintiffs and the court have no idea whether or not what the agency met its burden of practicability under NEPA. Now, I'm, I'm slow. I'm going through these steps, probably foreign to all of you. Maybe some of you turn the channel because oh, I don't want to hear about all this. Eh, maybe so. This is your property rights in the face of the of a of what they'll claim is a national security interest. And I've offered how you go about protecting yourself. We're finally to the point where we see that the limit of the uh, claim of the Indians here is not really the the the, the reservation at all. It has to do with a provision relative to the NEPA, which is exactly, I said, they had to present to protect themselves. We now see the fruition, in fruition of this point, that protection. Does the shutting down actually mean they're shutting down that, that permanently forever, that pipeline? Now, I think reason would say not necessarily. And I say not necessarily because we don't know what the impact is. And then, once they have the impact statement, then we go into what they're going to do to mitigate that. And then, once you see what they're going to do, and the, now the oversight of the judge, who we hope is doing the balance of the rights correctly, they will decide what's sufficient in protection of the interest presented through the process given in the black and white, these, these laws and rules that people kind of disregard. The best we're going to get is asserting our right and interest against a competing interest. That's for us, between people, men and women, who would go at each other's throats, is how we've set this thing up in order so that we don't kill each other. Now, whether I... So, get back to the... Is the pipeline here dead? Well, it's shut down. It's an injunction. Until that agency complies with making an environmental impact statement, this pipeline will not transmit oil. Okay, so it's stopped for now. Once they do, and depending now for years going on whether or not, the, the, and once mitig I'll just say, once mitigation can be accomplished to the practicability standard that is approved by the judge, that oil is going to start flowing again. And guess what happened in all this process that I told Vince? 
I said, look carefully. What I suggested they need to do that they did not state, in other words, the making sure that the pipeline had bonds against every, everyone that might be affected in case of blowout, or to make sure it was laid to specs and not shortcut, short, short, shifted, short, short sheeted here on, the, on what they were supposed to do, that now is accepted and assumed is done properly. And those dangers are still there, notwithstanding whatever the EIS is going to say, because that EIS is going to be under the standards of, of installation that was supposed to be done by best practices. And so I'm not happy at one level for all the property owners on this thing, but it doesn't mean that this thing's going to stop. And it's, not, and it's going the way I suggested it would. Not to empower myself, I'm telling you that you can see in the news there's a way to think about this and there's a way that you best put your foot forward and there's a way not to. It looks like this victory, although they all oh, stop where there's the victory, we shut down the pipeline. That's actually not a victory, but that's okay. We have a competing interest that the impacts from the project of which have not been looked at. The court said you need, we need to have that impact statement. We need to look at this. And until we do, i got to shut this down right now. Because we may have a problem that is undisclosed, and it will do un irreparable harm that we may not be able to fix. And then the, 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 the pipeline came in, and to my mind, did really lame type of responses as well. But it, not with neither here nor there. This could be shut down. I don't think so. And I'm just going to tell you that. Why? Because I want you to understand that when a national necessity, security necessity steps up, you better have a whole lot more than whining and complaining about your your surface rights or the rights to water relative to that interest that may have an ability to be fixed when a short-term problem happens, as disgusting as that would be. I think they stopped this whole thing on one fish. Now, I don't understand how that one fish would would be affected, impacted any different than any other aquatic life in that downstream. But it wasn't even really about the water of, to the Indians. At any rate, not my decision. That's what they're going on. This thing got shut down, but it did it by the process. And I'm, I'm suggesting to you, those of you, you want to do 5G, you want to do uh, vaccines, chemtrails, this is the type of process you have to engage. And guess what? For the time being, they've got it stopped. And if it's a problem, I'm glad to hear that. But we'll see. I'm not glad to hear the oil stops if... They've got everything taken care of because we have these p competing land interests. And in some part, how would I be anybody who has a land interest where my interest is disregarded completely is answered in the process you jump into when something starts to happen in order to keep essentially the peace. And when I, as I, my main objection to all that Dakota Pipeline stuff is there was no peace being kept by so-called peaceful protesters, especially when they started losing arms and eyes and freeze to death and all this other stuff, when what they ought to have done is turned around, instead of being used as the stalking horses, they should have taken their process into the courts on what the rights they had they could present, not like they were doing before, which they had no proof for what they were claiming. Put out there what you have to protect. And when they did, you see what happens. The court said, oh, okay, the agency had an obligation. It didn't fulfill its obligation. And now we have to stop everything until that requirement is fulfilled. And we'll return to it when it's done. And so, again, you will repeat off all this stuff. I'm trying to show you that in what we're involved in, there's certain ways to go about it. You can't disregard that. Had the Indians continued down the way they would have, we would not have seen this thing. And we would need, if, if it's valid, I'm just going to have to give it to the judge at this point that if the fish is impacted different to an oil spill than any other aquatic life in that river. I'll just, okay, we got to go look at that. Not for me to decide now. When that thing gets done, that will have taken, when they get finished arguing over all the balancing, then the competing rights will have been as best as we can do as people. In hopefully a, a neutral forum, we've worked out amongst ourselves how competing interests can live and coexist. Now, I don't know what else we would do than that. Maybe some other people have different answers to that. But looking at this and trying to define the future, divine as Vince, V-I-N-E, v -I -N -E? Oh, well, he's... Again, Vince was actually in on this a bit, so 
he's like a witness to how this worked out. That today we hear that you press the system the correct way, at least correct enough. They've, they've now got the government to have to check what they're doing. Now, that shows that there's a check and balance even on the administrative side. And so depending on what you choose with your remedy will depend on how you go about doing that. Well, I say there's a more proper way. And there's a more proper way relative to just than, than just complaining, than just protesting, than just losing your arms and eyes and freezing to death in this case. Or going before a council and d d defy that I'm going to wear the mask. They don't care about all that. That's not what. That's not the agenda there. That's just a step on the road. You're not. You're missing the point about that as well. At any rate, moving on over. Moving into another subject matter now. Again, relative to what we allow upon us, the processes we don't take, the things that are available that we could shut down some of this at least. We look at alternatives. I bring these concepts up in the notice of the news here. Zero Hedge writes, Whitney writes, looks like Sweden has was right after all, moving into the COVID-19. This is where a government didn't accept the suggestions of the World Health Organization or the United States or China or any of it. This is the one that didn't lock down the country, and they're going to get ready to come out of this thing, and they didn't destroy their economy. What am I even talking about this for? Because those of you that are going to press and you find you're going to press and have alternative minds saying, oh, we got to follow the CDC and this and that, and, and you forget to press that they had to make their own tests and have their own tests locally, but there is no test, you can show that the remedies that are provided didn't address the problem. The harms that were committed by what they did do were harms that were avoidable and weren't, is evidenced in the Sweden, the case of Sweden. And I want you to see that this is evidence about that alternative that could have been taken instead of putting you in prison in your house, instead of making all these lunatic decisions like a face covering is, is going to be more than putting a chain link fence to stop a killer bee attack. Here's the evidence in this tab, if you'll use it, to show the alternative when you go to make a presentation, whether you want to do this in habeas or just go to your commissioners, that what they're doing is not certified to, and even where they assumed that it would, they didn't take the course of action because they figured that there was a way to do it and still do okay and not destroy the people in their rights. And that was never considered. And they had the requirement, they're obligated to find the least invasive, gives you more power in properly addressing these people that probably are on the tape. They're probably on the agenda. You build the record evidence that just if you have to go in every other time or every time there's a meeting to, that you forget to say something, you bring the next meeting with the next log you're sitting on the pyre that you're going to torch, essentially, eventually. And if you're not doing that, and for those of you that are in there engaging, please begin to do that for yourself. Don't just talk about the mask. Talk about their lack of authority and or the options they never took that diminished everybody that they didn't have the right to, and those were crimes. Now, okay, I'll, again, I want to read, but I don't want to read. <laughs> you can read. You can see what they're saying, and this is something you need to see, that black and white in your eyes and how it's described and what happened and what you can extract from what you're reading to empower you locally on how the local local government in a land of the free and home of the brave would have was never supposed to be imposed by the creature that the people and the posterity invented and here's how they failed and here's an example of how they could have done it different and if you want to call them about jump dumb jerks ignorant dumb jerks that need to resign I guess you could go there the point is, is you have a fact-based example of what's out there for us and what we ought to have chosen for ourselves instead of destruction. The silence of which, to which is actually emboldening the people that will just let you speak and yell and rail for a hundred a dollar a two, uh, to a, a minute and 20 seconds and let you walk away. They don't care. 
Then here's the other part about this on this COVID, this issue. Another example in history, recent history, maybe most of you were, have been alive all this time, I think it's the 70s, 80s. Faith in quick tests leads to epidemic that wasn't. This is a late-breaking uh, link. I don't know if anybody will have it. This just came out. This explains what I've been explaining to you about. There is no test. This explains how, in good faith, doctors got it wrong relative to whooping cough. And guess which, which, the, what test they relied on? The PCR test, the RT-PCR test. The reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction test, which is essentially a laboratory manufacturing process. It's not a clinical diagnosis. And this little story right here shows you, and I'm, I brought it out because it's so important. It's actually happening with some people that I'm talking with. That the people inside the government want to keep going with the government's guidances instead of what the responsibility was inside the uh, counties. And they're relying on these tests. They said there's a new test now. I'm told there's a test for COVID. There's a, actually a test for SARS-CoV-2. I'm still waiting for that evidence of that, that I'm going to analyze that. But that's what I'm told. And yet we see this story. It's a stark evidence that you can put in your bag of authorities, law, whatever you want to call it, in addressing the condition against you that shows that the test that they're relying upon and they continue to rely upon will throw out a problem that in the time that this was done was in good faith. Now that the health authorities know that this is a problem, it's not in good faith to harm you. Is the kind of thing I'm bringing here to tell you, I, I want to read, but I, this was actually, you, I actually should read this just to make sure it's on tape or file that, that you don't miss it. And maybe this is going to be, it shouldn't be, but maybe this is going to be a broadcast the more I think about it. They thought they had a whooping cough problem. This story tells you from the statement of a doctor who caused this non-problem. In good faith, it really wasn't, they just responded to what appeared to be emergency. You can kind of see that the way they're discussing, not like today where they're locking everything out and all this other kinds of things, but making the, cooking the books. They explain how they took something and they moved it, and they explain how the PCR test isn't what you think. This, like I've said, this is also confirmation of everything I've been telling you. That you pull it together to show that the tests that they've been relying upon are unreliable. Not because the guy behind the woodshed says so. Not because you have to divine going to the CDC and uh, divine how their serology test is not. But that the test they're using cannot do what it's saying. And they were supposed to come up with their own test. They even say that in this story. The local authorities had to have their own test. And I guess you know, I get a little bit irritated about when I say that just anybody point out when I where I haven't said any of this stuff. For what? Six and a half months. That we're as a people still locked down and not containing the oppression that we're now suffering because we can allow it to continue. This late breaking link is very valuable in explaining what should have happened, how the experts can get it wrong, and I say in good faith then, but because this happened then, not now. In other words, they know this is what they're doing against you. This is willful and knowing now you've got the elements of the crime I've been saying is sitting there already. Together with the failure, they would have been protected by the fact that they followed the due process required for an incommunicable disease in the statutes already there that I'm not sure any of you that are studying this have found they've complied with. Nobody yet has come up with the fact that they complied. I'm, I'm fascinated. I mean, how, how dead on could I have been to know before I even understood the due process that they would have failed? Why? Because the due process, we're in a nation, when we finally figure this out, when it stopped making sense, someone violated the law somewhere. 
because we're supposed to live in peace. We're supposed to live in notice. We're supposed to live in disclosure that the actions of officials that are in trust to the people are actually fulfilling that trust obligation and not breaching it. So this link was really got kind of hit me cool. I mean, I was cool, excited. I had to throw it in late. I wanted to make sure it's part of the list for this blogcaster. Read through this and explains that though they thought they had whooping cough, they could never identify the pertussis, the, the symptoms of which were from the common cold, which are just like today, coughing and fever. Now, when you see this failure, I don't know what the question continues relative to an official who has no local test, has no local certification, but wants to tell you they have the power to infringe upon your property and rights. You're just looking at someone that needs to either resign or needs to be booted out. Uh, how, again, you get a mass of people get figured this out. You walk in and they, does, they either resign or you walk them out or whatever. I guess, you know, I got bad examples from the miners that didn't take, didn't cotton to that stuff so good. Those types didn't last in the mining camps, not even till till dark. And so here's a here's an evidence right here that the tests. Well, I said there's no tests. They explain exactly how those tests were used to come to a thing that didn't exist, and that they could never test for, prove, or the thing they thought it was gave the same response, the same symptoms as the common cold. And let me add, add a couple of things. I was doing some checking. Do you know that if you take too much zinc in order to protect yourself from this, you will throw a positive on the PCR test of for being infected? Because your body starts to respond to the, the poisoning, the toxicity of the zinc you've taken too much for because you didn't understand what you were doing? Kind of like the guy dying from hydrochloroquine or something like that. Okay, so you're going to throw whatever it is. You can have a yeast infection. In fact, that story tells you that the pertussis is a bacteria, not a virus. And it still throws a positive. Just like we read from the document, I read to you from the documentation and informed me that there was no test for the virus, that they're testing for antibody response, that you have an immune system. And now they've twisted this thing that if you have an immune system, you're somehow going to infect the herd. Well, you're part of that herd. They also say 70%, but they're already telling us 80% are have the antibodies, which means that the vaccine's not even valid. How come no one's talking about that? How come no one asserts that as an improper imposition to head off this whole thing? Anyway, I don't, I don't know what more the answer is here. Just more I keep bringing this to you. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. You're going to have to go off maybe a little bit early, got a little bit of problem with the systems. And so uh, all you simulcasters, thank you very much. All the commenters, thank you. All the people are doing uh, working together, appreciate it. And all the thumbs up or whatever you do and the reminds and the bit shoots. And thank you all for being there to do all that and get the word out. We're not helpless. We have every power, and it was told to us long ago. We just have to believe it in ourselves and become more knowledgeable to it. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.